Hello, and thank you for joining us here at the Greenbrier Church Online for our Wednesday prayer prompt. Over the past several weeks, we've been looking at the fourth psalm, and the whole intent is we want to learn how to pray like David prayed in times of suffering. Here's a quick summary of what we've already talked about. The very first week, we said that in times of trouble, it's helpful if we'll just slow down and try to remember how God has shown us grace and mercy in the past. The second week, we talked about in the midst of suffering, Often what we want to do is to act quickly in an effort to get away from the pain, but our best option is to slow down and to spend some time thinking about what we are going to do. Because in moments of pain, it's better to be silent. You see, we have this excellent track record of hurting other people with our words. Then we talked about the fact that worship is rarely sweeter and more heartfelt than in times of trial, because in those moments, God is often in the process of removing the physical treasures that compete uh, with His place in our heart. And then we said oftentimes we're tempted to turn inward when we're suffering, yet David reminds us that this is the perfect time to turn outward and to minister to others who are also suffering. So let's read through this psalm one last time together. God, you are my righteousness, my champion, defender. Answer me when I cry for help. Whenever I was in distress, you enlarged me. I'm being squeezed again. I need your kindness right away. Grant me your grace, hear my prayer, and set me free. Listen to me. You elite among men, how long will you defame my honor and drag me down into shame? Will you ever stop insulting me? How long will you set your heart on shadows, chasing your lies and delusions? May we never forget that the Lord works wonders for every one of his devoted lovers. And this is how I know that he will answer my every prayer. Tremble in awe before the Lord and do not sin against him. Be still upon your bed and search your heart before him. Bring to Yahweh the sacrifice of righteousness and put your trust in him. Lord, Prove them wrong when they say, God can't help you. Let the light of your radiant face break through and shine upon us. The intense pleasure you give me surpasses the gladness of harvest time, even more than when the harvesters gaze upon their ripened grain and when their new wine overflows. Now because of you, Lord, I will lie down in peace and sleep comes at once, for no matter what happens, I will live unafraid. Our last prayer from this psalm comes from verse 8. Now because of you, Lord, I will lie down in peace and sleep comes at once. For no no matter what happens, I will live unafraid. I'm honest enough to admit that when I'm experiencing pain and suffering, I don't have a whole lot of joy and peace in my life. Maybe you've noticed that in your own life that joy is typically dependent on pleasurable experiences. Your peace is typically found in a predictable schedule. When those things are stripped away, we convince ourselves that we have plenty of reasons to stay awake at night and to toss and to turn, to try to figure it all out. David is facing an incredibly uncomfortable and unpredictable circumstance in his life. And instead of wallowing in self-pity, he's led to write this psalm. If he decided to express bitterness and restlessness, we would not only understand, we would justify his response. But there's one big reason why, in the middle of all of this suffering, David finds joy and peace. Because his hope is not rooted in his circumstances. His hope is rooted in God. You probably know this by now, but your life is vulnerable to dramatic change. People will turn their back on you, the economy crashes, sickness strikes at any moment, or the mask order and quarantine seem to go on forever. If your joy and peace are dependent on your circumstances... Your life is constantly dealing with this roller coaster of emotion. That's why it's so important for for our faith in God to be a steadfast faith in His character that doesn't change. Our God is loving and wise, patient, strong, and kind at all times. He's a steadfast rock. And when our joy and peace are rooted in His character, we can find the ability to fall asleep even when everything around us comes crashing down. Now, usually when I read stories like this in the Bible, it's easy for me to get discouraged. I mean, David was a great man of faith, a man after God's own heart. There's no way that I can ever live up to that standard, right? Those are the moments that I need to be reminded that David is a good theologian. He's not a good person. 
I need to be reminded that this is the same David who rapes Bathsheba and commits murder of her husband. He's not perfect by any means. He's broken in, in a sinful man, just like you and just like me. The difference is he's placed his complete trust in God, and that enables him to rest. We've spent a considerable amount of time in the psalm because it challenges our faith and the way that we respond to suffering. But we've also spent time in the psalm because it encourages us to live a life of trust. If God can fill David's heart with all of that dirty laundry, with peace and hope, then why won't, the God, why won't God offer us that same grace? You see, Psalm 4 isn't the testament of an unrealistic holy Christian. Psalm 4 is a narrative of what the grace of God can do in the heart of anyone who seeks Him. God will meet you in times of trouble and give you the grace to endure. His grace will allow your light to shine to those who are not handling their suffering well. And so as we pray tonight, I want us to take one last time to pray through this psalm. But I want us to pray that God will reveal His true character to us, His character of love and peace, so that we can find rest even in the midst of struggle, even during the times when it seems that everything around us is falling apart. We'll be able to find rest and peace because our rest doesn't come from our circumstances. Our rest comes from from our God. Will you pray with me, please? Father, we want to thank you for being a God of love and compassion and grace. And even in times where it seems that, that our circumstances are clouding our vision of you, if we'll take the time to stop and to think back, to reflect, and, and to, to remember how you have loved us and you have been compassionate towards us in the past, Lord, I know that it will help us have faith that you will continue to pour out your compassion and your love and your mercy and your grace in our lives in the present. Father, clear our vision so that we can see you for who you really are. Father, give us uh, the ability to understand your love and your grace so that as we go day to day and the things of our world seem to be falling apart and and life seems to get tougher and more difficult, Father, so that we can have peace and we can use our peace to tell people of your love and your grace. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us your compassion and your presence. And Father, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to love you back. And Father, it's because we love you, we come to you tonight and we ask for your, your presence to be in our life. Lord, we ask this prayer through the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I hope you have a great week. I hope that every day the Holy Spirit will continue to grow and to well up in your life, that you will be able to understand and to acknowledge every day more and more of the presence of God in your life so that you can be salt and light to this community. Have a wonderful week. I pray that you go in peace, and I look forward to seeing you very soon.